What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YG from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video and we've got another tournament report and this one is going to actually cover multiple tournaments again because the DM era is popping off. You know, more and more people are playing formats that I've covered on the channel and it's really cool to see. So if you want to join these tournaments in the future, definitely head on over to the respective Discord servers that they were held in. I'll have links to those in the description, but also head on over to the YGO from Zero Discord server link in the description as well. And if you want to check out the coverage that I'm doing here more in depth, then definitely check out the coverage linked in the description as well. There'll be a lot of links in the description for this video, but it should probably be pretty fun especially because one of those links will be to a tier list for one of these formats that I'm going to do after I go through the tournament coverage. So look forward to that at the end of the video. It should be pretty fun. But before I go through that tier list, we've got some tournaments to cover. And the first one we're going to cover is JJ3, which was an Android format tournament held on Android land, which will be linked in the description down below. And this was a pretty exciting tournament. It had 26 people in it for Android format. I think Android format's really, really fun. But, you know, as the deck type representation kind of shows, it was, you know, pretty dominated by, like, Tomato Control, Beast Spellcaster, whatever you want to call the good stuff deck. That was what dominated the tournament. 26 people showed up, 20 people brought that, and the top cut was all that deck. And it makes sense. That deck is very, very strong in this format. It's just able to get really aggressive very quickly and just sort of outpace all the other decks in the format very, very easily. So, you know, I would probably call Android format a tier zero format with that deck being tier zero. So, you know, Android format's not going to need an update to its tier list. So that will not be what the tier list is for in this video, but we do still have stuff to talk about here. So I want to talk about the other decks that people brought. There were three Earthbeat decks here, which could be a variety of different things. It could be like more Ratbox focused decks, you know, going to Momongas, things like that. Maybe, you know, Dream Clown or stuff as well. Uh, where I'm like not the hugest fan of Ratbox in this format. I do think that like, you know, recruiter strategies could be a good thing in this format because we did see in some other formats that recruiters are just very, very powerful and playing two sets of them, not just tomatoes, but also like, you know, giant rats, maybe mother grizzlies, etc. cetera, uh, can just give you more deck thinning and more power. So I do think that that is potentially an option going forward for this deck. You know, if people do want to experiment with this stuff more, maybe cut out things like the mangas and stuff and maybe just lean more into um, just, you know, deck thinning and just going for that. Although the mangas also help deck thinning. I feel like if you go with too many recruiters in the deck, then you're in for a pretty rough time. So, uh, I think there's still more to be discovered with those sorts of recruiter decks, but you know, we'll have to see if people continue to experiment with that in the future. The other decks that people brought were Goblin Control, which I assume is Robin Goblin, you know, trying to leverage that to rip cards out of the hand. Uh, Fiend, which is probably like Necrofear and stuff like that. Maybe Hades as well. Uh, and also, actually, I don't think, yeah, Hades isn't out at this point, so I think it would just have to be Necrofear then, because Necrofear was out, I believe, by this point. But, um, you know, covering so many formats, it's easy to get some things mixed together, but Fiend did not do that well either way, so uh, I don't know exactly what that deck list was, but I have not seen it. Uh, Waterbeat was also here as well, using things like Aqua Spirit to get more aggressive there. So water is something that people have experienced with this in this format as well. And uh, unfortunately, it's never quite converted. But, you know, I do think this format is tier zero. It's still cool to see people experimenting with it a little bit more. And who knows, more exploration, maybe someone can find another deck that can sort of threaten the dominance of Tomato Control. But because the top deck, you know, we're all just sort of like Tomato Control list and very, very similar, despite some like ratio changes. I'm only really going to cover the top two of this as opposed to going through the entire top eight. If you do want to see those other top eight deck lists, definitely head over to the format library coverage of this tournament, which again, will be linked in the description down below. But, you know, realistically, there isn't like too much to talk about here besides like specific ratios in the decks that did the best. The first of these I want to talk about was the second place deck list piloted by Kesha to the second place position and very, very cool deck list. You know, they are doing some interesting things in the middle of having this sort of tomato control deck. They're also playing Mask of Darkness, potentially recycle things like Time Seal or Jar of Greed, as well as things like Torrential Tribute or Skull Lair, etc. A lot of powerful traps that you can get back with Mask of Darkness in the format. So I'm very happy to see it experimented with here. Also a Magician of Faith as well to get back powerful spells. Dust Tornado in here, this can stop things like Skull Lair or Call of the Haunted or Imperial Order, which is probably what this is used most for. Kesha, you know, in, in a pro gamer move, did not actually have Imperial Order in their main or side deck. They didn't need it. You know, they were able to get to second place without Imperial Order. Um, but, you know, realistically, they should have included it. They, they you know, realized that they forgot it after tournament began. 
but still it definitely shows that, you know, one power card is not going to make or break how you do in these tournaments. It really comes down to very good play. And Kesha is a very good player at this format. So uh, very, very cool list here for sure. Uh, they are going for the double TT, which is an important note. The debate between Torrential Tribute and Trapple, which one should be in your main deck or not, uh, is one that has raged long and hard in this format. And, you know, Kesha seems to be siding with the Torrential Tributes, which made sense. You know, having a board wipe is kind of nice. But we might see another deck uh, that I'm going to talk about here that goes for a bit of a different approach and is reward for it. But for the beater ratios as well, it is important to note uh, double Bazoo, double Kaiku, and triple Gemini Elf. I like going more aggressive on these beaters, you know, playing triple Gemini Elf. I think that makes sense. I personally prefer Triple Kaiku as well, but like I think that this is a perfectly fine ratio and just a very, very good deck overall. So congrats to Kesha for making it all the way with this deck. The other deck I want to talk about is the winning deck list piloted by uh, Efkin Azin Dean. I never know how to pronounce their name completely, so I just call them Dean. Uh, but, you know, they're also a very, very good player in this format. They've grinded this format for quite some time and their hard work was paid off in this tournament. So they managed to win the entire thing. And, you know, this deck on the surface is also very, very similar to Kesha's, except there's no Mask of Darkness. Um, there's also an additional Kaiku here as well, so they're not playing, uh, you know, I guess the, the slot that this would be replacing would be Mask of Darkness. So they're playing the third Kaiku, and I think that does make sense. I like the triple Kaiku, triple Gemini Elf, and double Bazoo lineup. I like that lineup a lot, because Bazoo is, like, one that you don't want to go three on, because it does require graveyard setup, so... Uh, I, I do like this sort of ratio for the beaters there. And this allows you to get just very, very aggressive very quickly. They are also playing this double trap hole here, which makes sense if you're playing one more beater. Because the way that, you know, oftentimes these beaters are removed in this format is, you know, Gemini Elf hits over Kaiku. Kaiku can stop Bazoo and potentially hit over that. And Bazoo can hit over Gemini Elf. So, you know, if you've got one of these up on field and your opponent brings out another monster, you could TT it, but then you lose your own monster in the process. Whereas Trap Hole, you get rid of their monster and you keep the aggressive pressure going. So I do like Trap Hole in this format quite a bit. But... Uh, no time seal in this deck as well. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of time seal, but Ketcher did do very well with it. And they said that it was a big performer for them in the tournament. So, you know, maybe people should play more time seal. But, you know, as this list shows, you definitely don't need time seal in order to win a tournament here. But still very, very cool stuff. And, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not really going to get too deep into the weeds here. I mean, for the Android heads out there, like, and, you know, we do exist. Like, I do think it's very interesting just to talk about these specific ratios in a format like this. Um, you know, this could be very interesting, but for the general audience, maybe it would be a little bit less interesting. But if you do want to check more into what people were playing and what the ratios were, head on over to the format library coverage of this tournament and, uh, and, you know, just enjoy, go through all the data, you know, figure out what ratios you want to have in your own deck and, you know, bring it to the next tournament. But that's going to do it for the discussion on the Android format tournament. But there was another tournament that was held and wrapped up this week. I streamed both finals uh, for the Android format tournament and also for this other tournament as well. So let's dive into that one now. Okay, the other tournament that wrapped up this weekend was the first ever treasure hunt held on the Treasure Trove Discord server linked in the description down below. And that's for treasure format. And treasure format is a format that you know, it was a bit of a rough road, you know, to reach this point. You know, it hasn't really had regular tournaments in quite some time. And a lot of people view it as sort of like discount critter. I don't really um, agree with that view. I think Treasure had its own merits here. And 27 other people also agreed and joined this tournament to play. And it was a really, really interesting tournament. A lot of very cool stuff and innovation happened in this tournament. So it was awesome to see people, you know, repping different decks and repping different techs. And I think we wound up with a very, very interesting top cut here. Now... The format library coverage of this kind of came out wonky where, you know, it had its own win that, you know, didn't actually win the tournament and stuff. So it's a little bit wonky in that regard, but I do think that the deck type representation should still be, you know, um, good. I, I think that this still is true. And in this deck type representation here, we had 21 people on tomato control, which is sort of like the good stuff pile sort of deck. But as you'll see, uh, there are some different variations that you can play on that tomato control sort of deck to change things around a bit. Uh, two people were on Clown Control. I was one of those two people. I really like Clown Control. I think it's fun. Unfortunately, the Clown Control players faced off against each other. And so I unfortunately had to knock out my fellow Clown Control enthusiast from the running. But uh, I think the deck is really good. I think it's probably like tier two, which I'll get into in a second because I'm going to be doing a tier list for this format, for a treasure format, uh, just to basically say how this tournament really affects my rankings of different decks in it. But uh, I think this is probably a tier two level deck. Empty Jar also had two players, but unfortunately it did not do very well, or fortunately, depending on what you ask. 
Uh, Germ Burn had one player, but Germ Burn actually made it pretty far. It made it to the top four. Uh, you know, knocked out by Ghost, I think, who made it to third. But either way, very, very good stuff there from the Germ Burn player. Uh, Recruiter Control also managed to get represented here, but I'm not really sure what this means by Recruiter Control. Because, as you'll see, some of the decks that are in the top positions that were, you know, labeled as Tomato Control could more slide easily into Recruiter Control. So I'm not quite sure what distinguishes this Recruiter Control deck from the Tomato Control decks and vice versa. But either way, you know, this does show that, like, while it may seem like a Tier 0 format here, uh, I do think that there is some variety in it. And I do think that, like, you know, a lot of the good stuff decks are sort of, you know, lumped into the Tomato Control. And it's definitely not, like, a full picture necessarily. And there probably should be other classifications for these sorts of decks but you know i'll get into all that when i cover the tier list here but without further ado let's dive into the topping list themselves let's start with the third place deck which was piloted by ghost of 41st past and this is a very very interesting deck this is i think lumped in as tomato control because it does have the tomatoes here but you could arguably call this banisher control just playing three banisher of the light which is really annoying for certain decks to deal with because one of the most important features of this format is the Sangan and Witch resource train, where, you know, even if you're a bit behind, the Sangans and the Witches can replace themselves and sort of continue to build your resources as you sort of claw your way back into the game. But Banisher of the Light can stop all that. If Banisher is face up, then any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So if your opponent has Sangans or Witches or even Mystic Tomatoes or other recruiters like that, then the Banishers can really stop that prevent them from getting the value off that and cut them off of resources, which is very, very powerful. Of course, this is kind of a double-edged sword. If you've got Sangans and Witches of your own, then the Banisher can conflict with that. But, you know, again, some decks can be very, very good here, and it was good enough to get Ghost uh, third place here. They're also doing some other interesting things, playing Triple Mania about Triple Magician Faith, going all in on the flip monsters here, which doesn't make sense as there are a lot less ways to deal with the flip monsters in this format. Uh, although you could argue that Magician of Faith is kind of an anti-synergy with Banisher of the Light because if you activate a spell, it will be banished along uh, with any monsters uh, because of Banisher's effect. But still, you likely have a good spell in Grave to get back from Magician of Faith either way. So, you know, pretty straightforward deck besides that. And a very, very interesting deck. So I'm very curious to see if people continue to experiment with Banisher of the Light in the future, especially given that this card did not only appear in the third place deck list, it also appeared a little bit higher up the road as well. The second place list is from Soul Emerald 69, who actually went undefeated in the first part of the tournament. It's a double elimination tournament. So going into the final matches against the grand winner of the tournament, GBO, they actually had the advantage because they had to lose twice in order to actually lose the whole event. So that shows how good this deck really is here. Uh, even if they did ultimately lose with the final event here, uh, I do think that this deck has a lot of merit to it. And this is like Goblin Control, so... I've been a bit down on Goblin in the past because I do think that, like, it is a bit weaker in a format with Triple MST, but even if it is weaker, it is still very strong. And also, if you're backing that up with a Banish of the Light as well, if so your opponent attacks into the Banish of the Light, you flip up Robin Goblin, they lose a card in hand, and that card is banished. So that's a very, very powerful combo if you can pull it off. That being said, I don't think this is a perfect list by any means. Uh, I do think that there are some things that you can change with it. Like, for instance, I'm not the biggest fan of White Magical Hat in a deck like this. You know, it is nice if you can get in for, like, two hand rips, like, with hat plus a goblin and stuff. But I do think that that is sort of like a win more sort of situation to be in. And a lot of the times, like, if you draw into just, like, hat goblin and your opponent has the upper hand, then you're in a really bad spot. And we did actually see that happen in the finals of the event. So I'm not sure if I like going all in on the hand rips like this, but it is a very, very powerful combo if you can pull it off, and it is searchable off Sangan and Witch. So if you do have a way to clear for your White Magical Hat, that's very good. But, you know, you also get Jirai Gumos here, which are very, very cool. They can get over 2k defenders like Banisher, and also they pair with Robin Goblin, as these things can basically hit over anything and rip a card out of hand if Robin Goblin's up. So very, very cool stuff there. Of course, there are the Tomatoes going to Sangans and Witches and Cannon Soldier. Also a Mass Sorcerer, although in... Sort of talking afterwards, Soul said that they might cut the Mass Sorcerer for something else in the future. So that's a potential thing you can do as well. I, I do like Mass Sorcerer, I think, in this deck. Um, you know, it's just a way to prevent your opponent from just attacking in with like Sangans or Witches, etc. But maybe you just want them attacking them with Sangans and Witches, so you don't want this Sorcerer in the deck to sort of confuse things. And then you want to get the Hand Rips with the Goblin. So that is an option as well to consider there. But other than that, very, very cool deck they're playing the double boku here double trap hold mirror force etc 
So, you know, I think that's that's pretty standard overall. Double Fisher instead of Triple Fisher, but it seems like deck space had to get cut somewhere. Painful Choice in the deck as well. Not everyone plays Painful Choice, but I do think the card is very, very powerful in the right hands, and Soul's Hands are definitely the right hands because they have won a previous Treasure Tournament in the past, and also, you know, they made a second here, so clearly they're a very, very good Treasure Format player, and I'm curious to see what they cook up for the next event as well. Now let's dive in to the winning deck list piloted by GBO playing Triple Giant Rat and Triple Mystic Tomato. So this is sort of like why I say that, you know, this was classified as tomato control, but like it could definitely be classified as recruiter control instead. Um, because, you know, you're playing Triple Giant Rat, you're playing the Triple Mystic Tomatoes here. And so that's basically recruiter control uh, just right there. That being said, I do think that the recruiters are just very, very powerful in a format like this. Even if you don't really have the best targets, like a lot of people when they play Rat in this format, they also include a copy of Dream Clown to go into off the Rat, because if your opponent attacks into the Rat, you go into Dream Clown next turn, you get a pop, and that's pretty good. But, you know, if you draw into that Dream Clown, it's really awkward for you. So I do kind of like what GBO did here, where they're just playing a Giant Soldier of Stone as the target for Rat. So even if you draw into the Giant Soldier of Stone, it's not that bad to have in hand. You just set it, it's a 2k wall. That's pretty decent there. So I do like that approach to the deck. And I think that, you know, even if you're not getting a super high value target off the rat, you're still getting something. And that's still deck thinning. So deck thinning is very good here. They've also got the manure bug in case they draw the giant soldier stone. Although obviously you don't always want to go into the manure bug, but if you do need to, you can. And they're also playing summon skull to convert off their recruiters as well. So if they go into something, you know, they can bring out summon skull, attack over 2k defenders, things like that, or just get really aggressive there. They've also got Change of Heart and Snatch to, of course, convert off the Skull as well. They are also playing the Painful Choice here. So, again, very uh, tricky card to use, but in the right hands. And GBO's hands are definitely some of the right hands as well. Uh, it can be very, very good. And so, I wouldn't be surprised if more and more people start playing Painful Choice. Because it is a very tough card to use in this format. Not really much graveyard setup you can do. In fact, GBO isn't even playing a Magician of Faith in the main deck or the side deck. So, you know, you can't even do the recursion there with it. But if you know what you're doing, it can be very, very powerful and can even win you games. But they're also playing Triple Boku, Triple Trap Hole, and a Mirror Force here. The Triple Boku thing is not necessarily standard, but I do like it a lot. I think Boku is a very valuable card in this format and a lot of other formats as well. Um, but, you know, it is often slept on because the effect is kind of underwhelming. But here it shows its value and uh, definitely came in clutch for GBO at multiple times in the event. For the side deck, there's some interesting things here. We saw Rush Recklessly. It's those were used to get 2k defenders, but we're very good in that role. Uh, also, you know, Solemn Judgments here. GBO actually did something where they sided in a Solemn Judgment and then just never sided into it again. Uh, so that way, Soul was always sort of second guessing, like, okay, do you have a Solemn Judgment? Do you not? And that sort of like messed with their game plan a little bit. So very, very clever move there as well. The side deck shenanigans in this format are definitely stuff that you can play around with. Uh, also more Manier Bugs here. You've got Jerry Gumos here as well to start off Witch for the 2k defenders. A Hercules Beetle, which is a giant rat target that, you know, GBO was thinking about to win some Recruiter Wars, which is kind of an interesting tech. They did bring it in occasionally. So that's kind of neat. It also, you know, if you're playing a bunch of recruiters, it's not terrible to use up. You can also use convert off the change of heart of the snap as well. So that's pretty good. Gaia power as well, if they really wanted the aggression on the earth stuff. Uh, Double heavy storm makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, this is a very, very good list. If you want to try something a little bit more off the beaten path in treasure. And I think that all the topping lists that I've shown off here uh, show that there is still a lot of room to explore and grow in treasure format. I mean, no one even brought Relinquish, which is a very, very powerful deck in this format uh, that people have been tinkering with in the past. So, you know, there's room to experiment with that. There's room to experiment with like the typical good stuff sort of deck that you can think of. Room to experiment with these recruiters more. So it's just a very, very exciting time for treasure format. And there will indeed be another treasure tournament coming down the pipeline, the Treasure Hunt 2. So definitely head on over to the Treasureland Discord server or Treasure Trove Discord server, sorry, uh, if you do want to join in that in the future. Now that a pretty major treasure tournament has wrapped up and, you know, the meta seems to be shifting around a bit, I figured it'd be a good time to make a treasure format tier list. So that's what we're going to do here. I've got a variety of different decks down below that you can play in treasure format, and I'm going to rank them from tier zero to trash. Now, just before I get into the ranking itself, I should define what these tiers mean. Now, this is basically based on, you know, what you can expect to see in a tournament setting, right? So tier zero would be if the top cut of a tournament is made up of pretty much entirely one deck, then that would be a tier zero format. And then tier one would be if, you know, a fair amount of the top cut is made up of one deck, but like, you know, it's not the entire top cut. And also it's a deck that you would potentially expect to win a tournament, but one that like, 
yeah, it, it basically is a, a deck that you'd expect to win a tournament. Like if, if it won a tournament, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm, I'm surprised that th that deck won, right? You'd be like, okay, that makes sense that that would win. Tier two is a deck that you would be a bit surprised won a tournament, but you wouldn't necessarily be surprised that it made it into top cut because it's a pretty good deck, but it doesn't necessarily manage to get you all the way to the finish line in a big tournament. Rogue would be a deck that you'd be surprised to see in top cut. You'd be like, how'd this make it in here? It must have a pretty good player there. And then Trash is a deck that you would just not see in top cut at all. Like you'd, you'd be surprised if this deck won a game or two, right? So that's sort of the ranking system here. And to start out with, I don't think there's any tier zero decks in treasure format. I don't think it's tier zero, despite, you know, the, the graphic on format library having a ton of tomato control in it and the top cut being labeled as tomato control. I think that, you know, there are a, a variety of different things that um, people can list there. I just realized that I don't have giant rat here to represent the recruiter deck there. So I should, I should add that. So give me one second and I'll do that. Okay, all is well in the world. Again, I added the giant rat here because I do want to say that like, you know, a deck like Recruiter Control that, uh, you know, that GBO played here with the Giant Rats and going more in on the Recruiters than just the Mystic Tomato. I think that is a Tier 1 deck. Did win this tournament. And I think it's very good. And I think in the future, we'll see more people adapting that strategy to more things and playing more Recruiters and other things as well. So we've also got a, um, you know, just typical good stuff uh, deck with the Tomatoes here. I, I represented Mystic Tomato. You could just say Tomatoes like Tomato Control, but... I, I would say that there's just a good stuff deck, right? You put all the best cards in the format in one deck. You play Mystic Tomato because that's one of the best cards in the format, in my opinion, because it goes into Saying It and Witch, which are very, very powerful at, you know, getting resource train going. So I think this card is very good, and I think that it's a perfect representation of the good stuff deck list. And I think there's also Tier 1. I, I mean, you know, these two are kind of like, I, I don't know. It, it's tough when, you know, the, the classifications are so, like, wonky with these sorts of decks that are playing a bunch of really good cards together, uh, but some lean in a slightly different direction. But I do think that, you know, given the results of the latest tournament, I'm just going to put the uh, Recruiter Control deck just a little bit higher. But again, that could definitely change in the future, especially if more people play Banisher of the Light. I didn't put Banisher of the Light down below because I feel like it's more of a tech card in these main control lists than its own strategy, even though we did see, you know, uh, Ghost on Triple Banisher. You could potentially classify that as its own thing. I wouldn't necessarily do that because there's not really a good way to turbo it out into something. Potentially Shining Angel, but that's kind of awkward because, uh, you know, Banisher loses a variety of recruit rewards there. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to put Banisher in its own deck just yet. If people do want to experiment with it, they, you know, can and potentially make that be a new Tier 1 deck. And that would be really cool. But for the last of these sort of Tier 1 decks, or maybe not the last. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily the last. But I do also want to put in this sort of like Robin Goblin uh, deck that, Soul was playing. I do think that Robin Control is pretty good. Is it Tier 1 or Tier 2? I think based on this past tournament, I'm going to put in Tier 1 for now. I can definitely see it sliding down to Tier 2 in the future. Because again, I do think that this sort of like Robin Goblin strategy is a bit win more. And so I don't necessarily know if it will continue to be Tier 1 in the future. But I do think it should probably be in Tier 1 there right now. Of course, speaking of Soul doing very well with the deck, I realized that I forgot to put another deck on this tier list. And that is this sort of like last will deck that Soul played in the previous Treasure Tournament. You know, going into Catapult Turtle, going into Cannon Soul, just doing a bunch of crazy combos with last will. And also playing like Mother Grizzlies and things like that. You could potentially classify this as a variant of the Recruiter Control deck, but I think it is different enough to sort of set it apart. Now, it did win the last tournament, so I could put it in Tier 1 here, but I think I'm going to put it in Tier 2 because no one brought it to this event. And so it could have been just a one-off thing where Soul was able to win, um, you know, just through good play and stuff. So I'm going to put it as tier two uh, right now. It definitely could rise up in the future, but given this latest tournament, didn't really see it featured. I'm not really going to put it higher than tier two just yet. But since we're on the topic of tier two decks, we've also got equip aggro. And uh, oh, do I put this tier two or do I put a rogue? That's the question here. I, I think I'm actually going to put it, not tier two, I'm going to put it in rogue. And that may seem weird because Equip Aggro, you know, it's a deck playing things like Axis Fair or other Equip cards to just buff up your monsters, Megamorph as well, to get in for a bunch of damage and stuff. But it has a major weakness in the form of MST. If you attack your monster that's equipped with something into an opponent's monster, hoping that the Equip card will get it over something, and that your opponent just fires MST, you've gone really minus there. Because you've lost your monster, your opponent has the aggressive pressure there, and that's really, really bad for you. So I, I'm going to put in Rogue, and no one really brought it to this event. So, you know, I don't really think that, you know, people are really experimenting with this. So in the future, if you experiment with it more, maybe it could rise higher. But I think the inherent flaws in the deck just 
sort of gatekeep it out of tier one. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it, like, I don't know. In the future, if you'll experiment with it more, maybe it could reach tier two because, like, you know, after a certain point, maybe if people are playing it enough and tinkering with it, maybe it gets you a point where it can consistently top. But I do think that it won't be able to go the entire distance to actually win an entire event. Now, that's just my opinion. And if you want to prove me wrong, definitely do it. You know, pick up the deck, try and adjust it for tournament play and win an event with it. Next up, we have Burn. This isn't a tier two or rogue deck. I think this is tier one. There was only one germ player, or uh, one burn player this tournament, and they actually managed to make it to top four. So I think that shows how good this deck is. It managed to win a past event. You know, whenever people bring it, it does decently well. So I'm going to put it in tier one. I wouldn't be surprised if it wins an event in the future, and it will consistently top from what I've seen of this event and previous events as well. So put it in tier one, but I'm putting it in the bottom of tier one. Maybe it will sort of fall to favor further in the future, but uh, this past tournament, you know, only one person brought it, and they did convert to the top four, but, um, you know, you could argue that that is not an impressive enough showing to keep it in tier one, maybe just tier two, but I'm going to put it sort of bottom tier one for now. Next up, we have Clown Control. Clown Control, uh, this is, this is a bit tricky. I love Clown Control. It's near and dear to my heart. i put it in Rogue, though, above Equip Aggro. I think it's a very, very cool deck, and you can do a lot of stuff with it. But, you know, two people brought Clown Control to this tournament. Neither of them made it to the top cut. And the deck just does have some things that it suffers from. I think there are ways to build it and adjust it and optimize it to eventually get it to Tier 2. I'm not sure the deck is quite at that point yet, though. But I really am curious to see what people do with this deck in the future. I'm definitely going to keep tinkering with it. Because I do think that this format's kind of the best that Clown Control does get. So I'm putting it in Rogue for now, but the top of Rogue definitely could rise to Tier 2 in the future. Next up, we got Harpies. Harpies, I'm just going to put in Trash here. Uh, I have Harpies here because I made a video on it in the past. But, like, this deck is really bad. Uh, you know, going into a Harpy's, uh, uh, Harpy Lee's Sisters, it's just not that good. And that's really what the deck wants to do. In Critter format, it was relatively okay, because you could also pair with, like, Mooka Mooka. But, like, Mooka Mooka's fallen out of favor here, because Mechanical Chaser does power creep it a little bit in weird ways that you wouldn't expect necessarily. The hand also hurt Mooka Mooka. So, because you can't slot it in that shell, the deck gets a lot worse. And I don't really think it's that good to play. So, also, if they hit Harpy Lee's Sisters out of your hand with a hand rip then you have no way to recover it. And so your elegant egotists are really dead. And, you know, it's not even the best payoff to begin with. But, you know, if that happens, you're just, like, dead in the water. So I don't really think that this deck is that good. I'm going to put in trash here. But, you know, maybe in the future it will rise to rogue. But for now, I think it's just, unfortunately, trash. Next up, we got, like, mill decks. So I'm not going to call it Empty Jar just yet. You do play Cyber Jar, but, like, I'm not sure it necessarily belongs uh, as, you know, Empty Jar officially because there's no Morphing Jar. I think this hovers around tier two in Rogue. I'm going to put it right now under Clown Control in the Rogue category because Clown Control did better than Mill did in this tournament. Mill had two players as well, just like Clown Control did, but the Mill decks were knocked out a lot quicker. And it does make sense. Mill's a lot harder to play in this format when you don't have access to Morphing Jar. So it doesn't really have that explosive power that it will eventually get. And I'm going to put it in Rogue because of that. Maybe below Equip Aggro, but I think that this deck operates on such a different axis that I do think it's a little bit above equipped aggro here. Um, but, you know, again, it's it's in rogue. Like, the ranking of the rogue category didn't really matter too much, in my opinion. Next up, we got Fusion. I think Fusion also goes in rogue for me, personally. Um, I mean, there aren't really too many good Fusions you can go into, but you can use the Fusion Substitute. You can use, like, Thunder Dragon to get Fusions to hand. And a 2800 beater um, in the form of, like, Twin Head Thunder Dragon is pretty good. You can also pair it with, like, Cannon Soldier or a Dream Clown to go into, like, the Curry Box or Labyrinth Tank if you use the Fusion Substitutes. So I do think it is interesting. I'm going to put it below the Mill deck, though. No one brought it here, just like Equip Aggro. So, you know, people aren't really doing anything with it. Eh, I'll put it below Equip Aggro because you do go sort of, like, all in. It doesn't lose to MST, but it does lose to multiple forms of removal, and you are using a bunch of resources to do this. So I'm going to put it below Equip Aggro, actually, but I do think it does belong in Rogue. I think it's slightly higher than Trash, but, you know, maybe it should just be long in Trash, but I do think that it can do something that other decks aren't doing, and if it does manage to stick its boss monster, that can be very good. Next up, we got Relinquished. I think Relinquished is a Tier 2 deck, even though no one brought it. I think the fact that no one brought it, you know, sort of makes it so that, like, this tournament doesn't really count for, like, its standing that much. In the past, it's done very well. And most people um, have sort of sung its praises. I do think it's very good. It hasn't had the tournament success that the Last Will deck had, so I'm going to put below the Last Will deck. But I do think this deck is something that people can keep experimenting with, bring to the tournament, and do very well with. So I think that Relinquished is definitely something to look out for if you are looking for um, a bit of an interesting deck to play. 
in the future. So, yeah, Tier 2, I think it's probably where it belongs because Relinquish also does something that not many other decks do in this format, which is it deals with set monsters, which is very, very powerful in this format as well. So, I think it definitely belongs in Tier 2, although maybe in the future we'll fall down to Rogue or maybe it will rise up to Tier 1. Only time will tell. Lastly, we've got Toons, and this is going in trash tier. I, maybe maybe above Harpies, but like it's just so bad. Toons is, Toons is awful. You can't attack for one turn um, for your Toon monsters, and if Toon World is destroyed, then they're wiped away. Now, of course, you can do things with Trunade. If you bounce back a Toon World with Trunade after bringing out your Toon monsters, then you can um, you know prevent them from losing to an MST, but then they lose to a Dark Hole or Raigeki. I mean, a lot of decks do lose to that, but then you've gone all in on your resources. You paid 1,000. So it's just not really that good. I guess I'll put it above Harpies because at least it's like, if it does manage to set up its board, it is more threatening than Harpies. But like, I, it's just not really that good at this point. But that's going to do it for the tier list. Let me know what you think about these tiers down in the comments below. I do like this tier list for what it is now. And again, it's very, very volatile. Treasures a very underexplored format. And so things could definitely shift around here more in the future. But I do like this for now. I, I think it's a good representation of the tournament scene right now and like what you can expect to see in competitive events. But as this grows further, maybe decks will fall out, maybe decks will rise. Only time will tell. And if you're interested in crafting that meta in the future, definitely join the Treasure Trove and YGF from Zero Discord servers linked in the description down below. This tier list will also be linked in the description down below. So if you do want to sort of try your hand at ranking these things for yourself, then that's the best place to do it. But I hope that you enjoyed this video as always. If you like this sort of retro Yu-Gi-Oh content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The best way to stay up to date with what I'm covering. And, you know, uh, also stay up to date on the tournaments that I host and also stream. And, you know, if you want to support me directly beyond that, I also have a Patreon link in the description down below. And if you join the Patreon, get shout out in these videos. So big shout out to Tyler Compton, Rincewind, GMYFS, Dump Truck, Pork Truck, and Run Donker. It really means a lot that you all support me this way and encourage me to make more videos like this. But, you know, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero. I'm signing off.